Today's wisdom from the Quran, five words, memorize them. Five simple words that resonate in the seerah and in the Quran. The Quran tells us that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Ghari Hira, when Ghari Thawr, and the Quraysh sent people to try to kill, and Abu Bakr was there, and Abu Bakr said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulallah, if they look down, they will see us. The Prophet Sallallahu responded with five words. Five words. La tahzan, inna allaha ma'ana. Memorize these five words and apply them for the rest of your lives, brothers and sisters. Memorize these five words from the seerah, from the sunnah, from the Qur'an. La tahzan, inna allaha ma'ana. Don't worry, Allah is with us. Don't worry, Allah is with us. Why are you scared? What are you worried about? We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next time a calamity strikes, next time we feel our debts, our financial losses piling up, Next time an issue happens with a relationship, with a friendship. Next time the politics of the office gets to you. Next time any type of calamity seems to overwhelm you. Tell your own soul, لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Don't worry, Allah is with us. Tell your spouse, لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Tell your friend, tell your colleague, tell your brother, tell the ummah, لا تحزن إن الله معنا. What are you worried about when you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look at this simple reality. Not only did the Prophet sallallahu himself feel no anxiety, not only was he in complete peace with his own heart, his level of confidence was so much that he could console Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. He could exude a level of tama'nina and a level of confidence that only comes from Iman. Subhanallah, there was no army to help Abu Bakr and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was no superpower. The entire world was after him. The Quraysh were hunting him down. He didn't have a single ally on the face of this earth, but he had Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And with that Iman in Allah, tawakkul in Allah, ikhlas, belief, yaqeen, all of that. What did it translate into? What are you worried about? Allah is with us. This beautiful verse, it is in Surah At-Tawbah, verse 40. And today I will give you another five words, another phrase that another prophet mentioned. Five words, the same concept. Our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is Surah At-Tawbah, verse 40. And the same concept, but slightly different words. Our prophet Musa alayhi salam, he is our prophet as well. Our prophet Musa alayhi salam, Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse 62. Shu'ara, verse 62, five words again. When Fir'aun was behind the people of Bani Israel and in front of them was the Red Sea and the Bani Israel were peasants, they were farmers, they didn't have any weaponry, they didn't have horses, they didn't have manpower and behind them was the largest empire on earth, the ancient Egyptian empire. They had the most militarily strong army on the face of the planet. In front of them is that ocean, in front of them is the Bahr, behind them is the army and the people of Musa, the Bani Israel, they said, Inna la mudrakun. They're, we're going to be caught and massacred. There's nothing we can do. They're going to catch us. But Musa alayhi salam, on the one hand is the Red Sea, and behind him is Fir'aun. He says, Kalla, that's not going to happen. They're not going to catch us. We shall survive. How do I know this? Inna ma'iya rabbi sayahdeen. I have my Lord. My Lord will find a way out for me. The same concept, in the same type of situation, when the world has abandoned, when nobody is helping but here we have both of the prophets they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they show their yaqeen their ikhlas they show the power of tawakkul how can you be worried when Allah is on your side who cares if Fir'aun is on the other side who cares if you don't have a single ally on this planet if Allah helps you then no one can overcome you if Allah is an ally then who cares who the enemy is Allah shall take care of you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Inna Allah yudafi'u anil ladina amanu. Allah will defend on behalf of those who have iman. So these two verses, brothers and sisters, they demonstrate tawakkul, they demonstrate iman, and they bring a sense of calmness to our lives. Now the question arises, how do we get to 
that level. And by the way, without a doubt, we cannot aspire to the level of the Prophet Sallallahu But, O oh Muslim, you are his follower, are you not? You are his follower. So what he did, you should also do. What he showed the role model, what he showed the way, you must also follow. And so when he shows us that even in times when you are in the Ghari Thawr, when the whole world is against you, when you are literally in a cave all alone, even then you can have that level of confidence, izzah, that level of sheer iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Me and you cannot get to that level, but we should try to get to that partial level. We should should try to be infinitesimally 1%, 2%, however much we should try to be inspired by that reality. So how do we do this? How do we get to that level? Number of points, first and foremost, studying Allah's names and attributes. Knowing Allah is Al-Qawi, Al-Aziz, Al-Sami, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir. Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and His asma and His sifat will bring about a level of confidence, a level of mahabba in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So studying who Allah is, this is of the ways to develop that level of ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, worshipping Allah at times of ease. I repeat, Worshipping Allah at times of ease. Get to know Allah when things are good. So that when things get bad, you already know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is exactly what our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakha ya'rifuka fi shidda. Get to know Allah at times of ease and Allah will remember you at times of hardship. Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakha ya'rifuka fi shidda. Get to know Allah when things are good. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is one of the simplest incentives to be religious. Not that we need any more incentives, but this is a perk. This is a blessing. We all need Allah at all times of the day and night. But sometimes we think we need Him more than other times. In reality, we always need Him equally. But our illusion that when times get tough, when there's a calamity, when there's a crisis, all of a sudden we think we need Allah more. In reality, we always need Him all the time. But khair, the point is, our Prophet teaches us, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you right now in Ghari Hira? You want to help you when Fir'aun is on one side and the battle and the, the, the Red Sea is on the other side? Well then, have you had a consistent relationship with Allah throughout the year? Such that the day you really call out to Him, you're not rediscovering Allah. You're not forming a new relationship. No, be consistent in your worship. Be consistent in your ta'alluq with Allah. And when you have that consistency, then when the world is taken away, your heart is still the same. Your heart is still the same. And so religiosity is one of the ways to get to that level. This is the second point. The third point of how to get to that level is when you do something, do it properly. Do it for the sake of Allah. Do it having asked the right people. Do it having prayed istikhara. When you do something properly, then when you get into a crisis, when you get into a problem, you will look back, you say, you know what? I did it for the right intention. I did it following the right steps. And I know Allah is with me. So. How do you do something properly is a whole other lecture. But very quickly, make sure you do it for Allah's sake. And make sure you ask the right people. This is called istishara. And make sure you pray Salat al-Istikhara. These are three simple things. Ikhlas, Istikhara, Istishara. You, may, you undertake any major decision. Then you find yourself in the middle of a crisis. You go back, you say, you know what? I did this for the sake of Allah. Allah will not abandon me. I did this with the right intention. Allah is going to bless me in this effort. If you follow the right protocol, then when the going gets tough, you can turn to Allah and say, Ya Allah, you know I am here because I put my trust in you and I put my trust in you, you will get me out of this situation. The final point because of time, of the ways we show that true tawakkul in Allah is through the power of dua. Making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Calling out to Allah at our times of need. This is of the most powerful mechanisms that we demonstrate. Allah is al-qawi. Allah is al-sami' Allah is al-basir. Allah is al-hay. By making dua, we demonstrate our iman. Oh Allah, I know you're there. I know you're listening. I know you shall respond, I know you have the power to respond. And all of these are ways we will manifest our tawakkul and dua, our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to conclude Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. No, I'm not going to be destroyed. My Lord will find a way out for me. And our Prophet said La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana Basically everything that increases your taqwa 
will also increase this level of confidence. Everything that makes your relate, relationship with Allah stronger, it will give you that level of confidence at times of distress, at times of calamity, when the world is becoming chaotic, you are going to be a shining role model example of peace and serenity and izzah and tawakkul whatever happens happens by Allah's will and I have entrusted myself to Allah la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana la tahzan inna Allah ma'ana and we'll continue tomorrow inshallah ta'ala assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah shahur ramadan alladhi unzil fihi al-quran hudallin الناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون